In a world where everyone has their own YouTube channel and podcast, this guy had a YouTube channel but no podcast. Now, here's the guy with zero original ideas. And that's why that kid grew up to throw his poop at girls. It's Sean Cash and the Sean Cash Podcast. All right, you started something. Suppose you finish it. I am doing another podcast. I am in the middle of a project that I'm supposed to be working on. I'm doing this podcast because I'm trying to take a break and step away from the project that I'm working on. And for those of you that follow this channel, you already know that I am working on a Star Wars multi-tool. I built one accessory head for the multi-tool and the base that powers all of the devices. And if you follow me on social media, you know that I'm pretty much done with my second tool head. The problem is, um, I didn't think doing one tool head in a video was enough content and worth the wait for what I put you through on this channel. So I thought, well, I'm going to build something else, another accessory for this tool head. Well, um, Things aren't going well. <laughs> I, I hate it. I hate the, the project that I'm working on. And I'm doing this podcast to take a deep breath and step away from it. I am going to finish it. I'm, I'm doing some different things and I'm hoping I can fix the issue that I hate about it. And I will release that video because that's part of why I'm doing this channel in the first place is to force me to finish projects because I've got the prying eyes of you, my peers and other builders and people that just want to watch me implode <laughs> on this channel. And I, I am going to finish it even if it's a project that I don't like in the end. And even if it's something that down the road I wind up redoing, I am going to finish this project. And I'm really close, so you'll probably wind up with two videos in one week. Um, but I do have some questions that I've been getting from my Patreons and people that watch this channel, and I thought that I would have a, a cleansing to my palate, and I would answer some questions and see how it goes with the other project. So I will get back to that and you will have two videos in a very quick back-to-back -back time, but I'm gonna just answer some questions now and take a break. <laughs> All right, um, this is a, a weird one. So um, the question is, um, you've shared with us some successes and some fun jobs that you currently have. What is the worst job or boss that you have ever had? The worst job or boss. Um, so I, at one point, um, when I was in high school, uh, I was offered a job. I didn't take it. Ooh, I'll, I'll give you an answer to both of those. So I was offered a job that I didn't take. The, um, you know those uh, portable septic systems that, you know, the porta potties and there was a company called Sweet Pea Septic that was in the area where um, I was going to high school and my stepdad worked for the forestry service and um, they did like clearing for burns and CDF is, is what he worked for. And um, he knew somebody that went and emptied those porta potties and it's, it's a terrible, terrible process. They, they pull up with these big trucks that have, you know, that big tank in the back and they basically go up to that with a clear hose and they put it into the toilet area and, and you hold that in there so that it doesn't fly out and you suck the contents into this big tank on the back of the truck. And it's clear because if it gets a clog, they have to know where the clog is to be able to clear it out and fix it. <clears throat> I was offered a job during the summer doing that in high school and it paid and I was in high school and I'm not going to exactly tell you how old I am now, but you probably know, but, um, it was $15 an hour when I was in high school and it was a lot of 
a lot of hours and I would have made a fortune and I, well, for me in a, as a high school kid, I would have made a fortune and I really considered doing it, but I, I just, I didn't know if I could deal with the smell and, and, and doing that day in and day out. That, that would have been awful. So, um, that was the worst job I almost had, which isn't what you asked, but you also asked boss and I'll tell you a, a terrible boss I had. So when I was in radio, um, there was a guy by the name of Willie B. Sorry, I'm just trying to, every time I move, it bumps this. And so I'm trying to roll this away a little bit. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, it's caught. Sorry. There, better. <clears throat> Sorry for the distraction. Tangent. Um, I, I had a boss um, named Willie B. And he's the same guy. I think I've mentioned this before. At one point in radio, he tried to have me go on the air as Yucatan Stan. He loved rhyming names for whatever reason. Um, I did mention I was uh, Rainbow Johnson at one point in radio. Um, but Willie B um, was my program director at one point. And luckily the vice president of that radio station really liked me. Um, so I didn't have to deal with Willie B a lot, and he hated me. Um, Willie B was not a fan uh, because I wound up taking over doing mornings, and his friend, a guy that he had worked with before, was doing mornings, and then he got moved to a different shift so that I could do mornings, and he didn't like that, and he didn't think I should be there. He thought I was too young. He thought I was too inexperienced. All of those were true, but he did not like me, and at one point, uh, we were having an air check session, and what that is is that's in radio when your boss goes over the tape of your show. Every time you turn on the microphone, it triggers the recording of a tape, so it's it's your entire show without the music. It's just the parts where you're talking. And so I had an air check session with him and he says, so uh, what job did you have before doing radio? And I said, um, I, I, was, I was in construction. And he said, um, is it too late to go back? Would they take you back? <laughs> Which I thought, that's, that's not really constructive and motivational, telling me would they take you back. Anyway, he was a, a terrible boss, and um, I've actually had a lot of bad bosses in radio. We could dedicate an entire podcast to just bad bosses, if you really had the time. Um, I follow you on Instagram, and I know you are working on a project, and you are posting other things that I know you aren't currently working on. Do you have multiple projects finished and you just make us wait <laughs> to actually see them? No. So I I have um I have um attention span issues. Which would explain why I have so many tangents when I do these things. So when I'm working on a project, I'm in my head, I am planning, and sometimes I'm actually doing test pieces for the next, or even the next, or the next after that project. I'm, I'm constantly, I was talking to Garland about this. Um, I have multiple projects in my head. I probably have the next six months of projects in my head. And some of them I've kind of started little things or test pieces on, and I post those sometimes on social media, on Instagram. Um, I think what they're referring to is this, and I might have it. This is, um, I don't wanna get into too much detail, but I've never made miniatures for a diorama, and um, I'm going to do one, and this is a small table that uh, I'm making. If you also follow me on Instagram, you saw that I was taking apart, um, I was taking apart some electronic boards and I was pulling things off. And the reason I was pulling small items off is I'm, I'm using them as the small version of items that are inside. Eh. I'm, I'm working on a lot of projects all the time. <laughs> I I just can't stay focused on one project. I start to, my interest starts to fade a little bit, and I find that 
reinvigorating myself with another project um, cleanses my palate and makes it so that I can go back to the project, kind of like I'm doing now with this podcast. Um, but, but no, I don't have a bunch of things done and I'm just making you wait. Um, I really have a hard time organizing all of the greeblies that I keep collecting and I'm not sure how to store everything. You seem to have everything together. <laughs> how do you do it? I would appreciate any advice. Um, I'm glad it seems that way because uh, you, you obviously haven't watched past videos. Um, this isn't organized. You're seeing the most organized area. I, I, I work in shambles um, and I'm, I'm really working on trying to fix it. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, B-roll here. Um, I purchased these containers, um, the Ace Hardware near me, um, they were changing the way that they were storing all of their screws and nuts and bolts and all of that kind of stuff. And I had these containers that they had out front and it said two for five dollars. And I thought, mm, okay. Um, and I got three and I went back to get more and they were all gone. Now, obviously everybody was thinking the same thing, but these containers are now empty and I'm going to use them to start storing things. And I love putting labels on things. And this room in here um, is actually the restroom in the guest house granny quarters that we have, which is my build area. And I um, built this shelving system where the shower and tub would normally be used, but no one's using this as a house. So I've been storing things and I've been putting things inside plastic containers and I've been using a label maker to try and organize them. And then here's here's one other thing. You probably can't see this. Let me see if I can. Ah, you're not going to be able to see this. I'm going to probably have to show you B-roll. But I have this cart. Um, um, mentioning Garland again. When I was with Garland at Ikea, um, I picked up a, a rolling cart. And I've also seen them at Michael's. You probably can't see that. Can you? All right. Um, I've seen them at Michael's as well. They're, um, it has three shelves and uh, you can get like little um, things to hang off of it, like little, um, you know, these kind of little things, little things to, to hang different things on it. Um, and I've been trying to organize that I put a paper towel rack on the back, and I, I did show this in my Try to Finish Something Facebook page, but I've also um, made little containers that uh, I can put my most used acrylics in, and it fits inside the little shelves, and those are free in my uh, Try to Finish Something group. Um, and I've also made one for glues and for kickers. And yes, to answer David White, um, who was mocking how many glues I have. I, I do have a lot of glues and most of them are the same. Some of them are thick and thin versions of glues. And the other thing that he was mocking is, I, I don't know what the problem is with my lids. Um, what happens is I get a glue buildup and then I can't put the lid all the way on, but it still keeps the contents fresh. So I have all these lids that don't fit all the way down because a little bit of glue gets in the top and it slowly stops being able to go all the way down. Um, I, I have a lot of glues and uh, I don't apologize for that. I, I use a lot of super glue in a lot of different projects, but I am not organized and I'm trying to get better organized and I will share things that I run across that help me get better organized, but I'm glad the illusion is I'm organized because I am I am definitely not. Um, I saw you in the Mandalorian outfit on May the 4th at the state capitol. Do you have any plans to do the Beskar version of Din or any other costumes? Um, I would love to do the Beskar version of Din Djarin. Um, I, I don't know when I'm going to find the time. I have a couple different projects and some different costumes that I'm doing for other people. Um, uh, there was a helmet that you saw me make a while ago on this channel and I'm, I'm doing some armor for her. Um, 
but yeah, I would love to do some other costumes. Um, I would love to do a Cad Bane. I would love to do the Beskar version of, of Din, just because a lot of the things are reusable, the boots and the, the sash, and, and I would be able to do a small amount of work and get a full other costume and be able to do that. And since that's the one that people now recognize when you're out and about, um, I, I would love to do that. Um, I would love to do some of the stormtroopers that you've seen in The Mandalorian recently. Um, but yes, I've, I've always got plans to do more costumes, but not, not currently doing things right away. I don't have a 3D printer or a resin printer, and I would love to make things. Do you have any advice? Oh, yeah, I, I, I don't think that that should be the gateway into you making things at all. I mean, the, um, the tool, the, the multi-tool that I just had a video for, and I'll put a link up here. Um, I, I didn't use any 3D printing. That is all done with um, stuff that I found at Goodwill. Most of it is a Nerf gun that I took apart and disassembled and used the pieces. And Greeblies are everywhere. The plumbing department, um, find old electronics and, and take those apart and use them. I, I don't think that you need a 3D printer or a resin printer to build. And, and there are a lot of people, Kelly Stern and Garland and there, there are so many people that build things not using those. And if you really, really need something 3D printed, I, I use Clever 3D Studios on Etsy all the time. And I have them print things for me. And I, I, I have a resin printer and I have a 3D printer. But sometimes the time it would take me to get it to the quality that somebody else can do at reasonable prices, it, it makes it not worth my time. I would rather spend my time during the build and, and not doing all of the printing. But there's, there's a whole other side and a whole other world to modeling and making that stuff for the, the resin and 3D printer. And I would love to get into that more, but you don't need one of those to build. And I, I, I say, just play around with it. Just do something, start small and get more intricate as as you do things. I, I You can take anything. I mean, you can build things from plywood. And I mean, look at, um, uh, you you could take you could take uh, a jigsaw and and make a ton of things out of uh, out of just plywood and things around the house. You gotta start with something small and and as your skill set grows and your confidence grows, just start challenging yourself and and just make things. It's it's a blast. It it's it's really a blast, and you just have to start doing it. Um, I've got one more question here and then I'm going to try and get back to the project that's frustrating me right now. I am a closet collector. I collect the three and three quarter inch Star Wars figures and my family makes fun of me calling them my dolls. <laughs> I think you collect figures too. Does your family understand? No, <laughs> no. And it's funny because, uh, my daughter refers to them as my dollies as well. She'll sometimes say things like, oh, are you going to go play with your dollies? And I'm, I'm not, because most of my dollies are, are in boxes. I, I, I thought I had a stack of some here, but um, I can't play with my dollies. They're in, in, in boxes. There are some of my dollies that I, that I remove from boxes, but... Um, no, I, I do collect the six inch figures and um, I, oh, I'll, I'll go out on a high note here. I'll make fun of myself. Um, I, I do collect the six inch and my, um, I'm not trying to collect every single one. If you saw my collection, you would think I'm trying to collect every single one because I have a ton of them, but I collect characters that I like or figures from a certain show that I like or stormtroopers. I am a big stormtrooper fan. I love the stormtroopers. The the entire line of stormtroopers, I love everything to do with the grunts of of Star Wars. And I collect them a lot. And 
My problem is, <laughs> this goes back to the organization, is I am really not organized. And, and sometimes I'll see them and they'll be on sale somewhere and I'll just buy them. But a lot of the time, um, I already have them. <laughs> because I'm not organized, I wind up with a lot of duplicates. And um, not intentionally. <laughs> but yes, I, I do collect Star Wars dollies and um the the six inch are the figures of my choice and i have quite a lot of them this um was one of my favorite characters from the obi-wan series which i didn't think was the best series i thought this was a great character and and under underused well actually he had a pretty big role but i i i, I really liked this character and I saw this figure and it was uh, on clearance at Target and I grabbed it. Um, I don't have a lot of other figures from the Kenobi, the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Um, again, this just goes back to me collecting the figures that I like. Um, but I have a lot. <laughs> I don't want to tell you how many. <laughs> but I have a lot of these six inch figures and storage for them is a problem. And that kind of gets back to the diorama. Um, I do have some figures that I want to create a place to display them. And I will be doing some dioramas or dioramas on the channel coming up. But um, all right, I'm going to get back to my build. But I just want to give you a quick podcast so that I could do something and and feel like I've accomplished something. Kind of like the advice that I gave you. Start with something that you know you can finish and then get more creative and do more builds. I'm trying to take my own advice. I know that I can finish a podcast, so that is another podcast. Thank you very much for watching and another build video is coming up very quick on this same channel. So make sure you keep watching and thanks for watching.